This is not a drill, nor is this clickbait. As I addressed in a recent video, practically every Five Eyes country is doing an almost coordinated attempt to bypass end-to-end -end encryption. And unfortunately, one of these laws actually passed in the UK. It is the first domino to fall with the passing of the online safety bill. Australia was the early bird with its anti-encryption law, though it appears to be more of a confused attempt at mimicking the US Patriot Act. But more are coming. There is legislation being addressed in the EU. Multiple pieces of legislation are being considered in the US. All these laws are under the pretext of protecting us against CSAM, child sexual abuse material. You should recognize that buzzword since they use it often. What it really means is that these governments want an infrastructure built in that can overcome end-to-end -end encryption. To me, there's a difference between governments mandating content moderation in public discourse on some online platform. But I think we can all draw the line in private communications. We don't need someone to be watching over our shoulder, especially a government. And the stupidity of these laws are that they actually think they can eliminate end-to-end -end encryption, when the reality is that the solution to bypassing these laws is simple. We just have to all move to Linux and other open source operating systems for phones. Don't be confused now. I'll explain what this all means if you stay right there. When I released that recent video titled End-to-end -end Encryption Will Be a Historical Footnote, some people thought it was clickbait. Some misunderstood the intent of the laws by saying you cannot beat end-to-end -end encryption since you cannot beat math. I remember some leader in Australia actually demanding some way to beat it. And yes, you cannot mandate a technological override to end-to-end -end encryption. But the three-letter and four-letter agencies off the five eyes, three, four, five, actually proposed a solution many years back, and this is what they've been pushing. The solution is to scan content pre-encryption or post-decryption. Again, let me make this absolutely clear. While the stupid leaders in Australia think they can defy math, the actual people with brains in the three, four, five realize that the answer isn't to defeat the math, but to bypass it. How? By putting in laws that make the OS and the apps liable for certain content, which then forces them to behave as a man in the middle, or MITM. This means that they are forced to come up with an architecture for content scanning. And the way to bypass the end-to-end -end encryption is to perform the content scanning on the client device. This is technically referred to as client-side scanning. So understand the effect of this. If your popular OS like macOS, iOS has the ability to do client-side scanning, then those on these devices can no longer claim to have the benefits of end-to-end -end encryption. Someone is now watching. Well, this is already past tense. Apple implemented client-side scanning technology on iOS since iOS 13, then they moved it to macOS. And people said I was a conspiracy theorist. While Apple does not claim to do any actual active scanning at this point, the tech is already there. So the Apple fanboys are appeased since this is not being used. Also, the scanning is done, in this case, by the AI, so client-side scanning by AI proxy. The problem is that while Apple did this to preempt future government demands, it now puts Google, Microsoft, Meta, and others on notice that they will need to come up with their own way to do client-side scanning soon. WhatsApp, Signal, Session, and others just stated flatly that they would just leave the UK market if pressure is applied to them. But what if all the Five Eyes implement the same laws? Then these apps will be between a rock and a hard place. And given that online apps themselves have limited abilities to control a client device directly, I'm guessing that the client-side scanning will be required off the operating system instead, just like Apple. You can assume that Microsoft Windows and Google Android would have to fall in line to implement these mandates. Bill Gates always believed that Microsoft Windows should spy for the government anyway, so maybe they already had this in the works. 
Many of you already have a content scanner on your device in the form of an antivirus. Not much more of a stretch to allow Windows Defender to scan images themselves as well. An antivirus isn't such a distant concept to client-side scanning. It is so similar to Apple's methodology actually. Instructions are passed from HQ and identified files are reported. That's exactly how an antivirus works. It gets the instructions, that is, the list of file heuristics to search for, and then it scans the hard drive. When it finds a matching file, it quarantines the file and reports it to the antivirus maker. So the concept of client-side scanning is to put modules in the operating system that will be the spy in the device. I characterized these earlier as man in the middle or MITM at the OS. Now the stupidity of the legislatures is that they don't understand technology. Maybe they can mandate specific companies to put MITM code in their OS, meaning Microsoft and Google. Apple's already done. But no one can force any of us to use an Apple OS or a Microsoft OS or even a Google OS. We have a way out. One of the ways they are trying to enforce this client scanning technology is by putting the burden of liability on the big tech company. They can demand billions in fines from Apple, Microsoft, and Google, and Meta. But how do they attack a free OS like Linux. First of all, all the fines are based on how much revenue the platform makes in their home country. Hint, Linux is free. Second, who's the entity to sue? Yes, there are some bigger companies supporting Linux like a canonical makers of Ubuntu or a Red Hat, but in general Linux is open source and populist. So here's the problem that a government can't solve. Let's say that Ubuntu is forced to implement some sort of client-side scanning software in their distribution. Well, this is Linux. The source code is open. It shouldn't be rocket science to disable such a module. We would know exactly which module to disable and they can't really hide it. It's the nature of how Linux was made. This is the same, by the way, with Android Open Source Project, which is also running a Linux kernel. So they are both Linux. We can look at the source code and if someone puts in some code in there to do a scan, we can disable it or remove it manually. And this is the magic of open source. Anyone can copy the source code and make another version of it, either for public distribution or even for private use. This is called making a fork. In fact, every popular Linux distribution or Linux distro is just a fork of some other version above it. The difficulty here for regulators is that there is no way to stop this unless they make open source illegal. Uh, good luck with that. Supposing you are one of the smart ones and want to protect your communications and you happen to be in the UK today or in some other future country, that will be affected by these laws. So you decide that you will be on Linux. Well, great move and if you're in the UK, you better get on with this. Might as well get ready before the teeth of this new law grabs a bite of your privacy. The problem though is the normie, meaning the average user. Let's say you decide to communicate with someone using end-to-end -end encryption. For a computer, the best choice would be Session Messenger. Now if you're running Linux plus Session Messenger, then you can be gratified to know that your side of things are pretty private and secure. No government mandated control will be active on your device. But if you talk to your girlfriend who's running Mac OS, even if you're using Session, her device is compromised and it is possible for her messages to be scanned. Again, let's make clear what an OS MITM can do. If the OS can see it, then obviously no encryption will be in effect. How do you not see content when it has to be displayed on your screen? This is why an OS MITM is so zucking sneaky. There is no way to perceive it or block it if the OS is proprietary, meaning if the source code is closed to view. So there's our dilemma. One occasional user using Linux isn't going to overcome the stupid laws. But if our community of people are all using Linux, whether in a computer or an open source Linux, Android, and a phone, then we retain our privacy. The question is, who is the law intending to protect? 
Using open source Linux, of course, wouldn't be too much of a burden for some evil perp dealing in CSAM. They can, of course, get around this like the rest of us interested in privacy. But again, you forget that CSAM is just a cover. The real purpose of this infrastructure is mass surveillance. The only way this mass surveillance works, though, is if the masses do as expected, if they behave like passive sheep. The more people on Linux, the more they encounter a mass surveillance block. What does it take to install Linux? On computers, especially older computers, popular distros like Ubuntu and Mint should be installable. New computers are available that actually support Linux from the get-go and have it pre-installed. Examples of companies that sell these devices are Starlab Systems, System76, and Purism. Popular brands also have Linux-compatible models. I personally own a Dell XPS 13 and Dell XPS 15, which are fully Linux-compatible. Others include an HP Omen, Acer Swift Edge, Lenovo IdeaPad, Asus Vivo Book, to name a few. You have to do research since the more obscure the hardware features are, the less it supports Linux. For example, touchscreens and convertible laptops are often iffy. Older Macs running Intel chips can be run with Linux. Newer Apple Silicon with M1 chips, however, cannot be modified. Same with an iOS device. If you use these devices, then expect that your content can be scanned. Many of you will say this is okay since you have nothing to hide. Well, the obvious retort is, do you keep your windows open at night? But the non-obvious fact is to consider that every email you've ever sent or received in your life since the 90s is likely stored in a three-letter agency database in Utah. Now think clearly about every email in 30 years. Are you sure you are ready to make all that go public? If you've ever been in a deposition where your emails for 25 years are dissected publicly, you will understand that you do not want this. I've been the subject of this kind of deposition. On the phone side, the practical solution is to use an OS that is a fork of Android Open Source Project or AOSP. There are many here, but the key is to choose one that does not include any Google apps. AOSP, by the way, uses a Linux kernel, so it is definitely part of this open source solution I'm talking about. There are phones pre-installed with an AOSP forked OS. For example, Brax phones come with Brax OS pre-installed. Otherwise, you can look for phones that are supported by Lineage OS and then install that OS over the prior Android version. There are other phone OSs based on AOSP that are also great, like Calyx OS, EOS, and so on. These are usually limited to particular phone models, though. If they are open source and based on the Android open source project, then you can have the safety of Linux. By the way, these are called the Google phones. The benefit of using Linux open source in all these different iterations is that surveillance, either from a government or big tech, is eliminated. Since a Linux OS is not owned by Big Tech, then there is no entity that monitors your device. By the way, besides using an open source Linux OS, consider using open source apps as well. For example, I do not use Microsoft Office. I use the free LibreOffice. Most of the apps I use are all open source. This will ensure that you are left alone, which after all is just what we want. Frankly, the idea that some country can legislate the removal of encryption is ludicrous. How about banning encryption completely in Australia as a test to see what happens? What about hackers? What about e-commerce? What about the private personal conversations of the government leaders? No exemptions to be granted. I'm going to guess that Australia would devolve into anarchy. Folks, my company creates products that are intended to protect our privacy. We provide phones that have no centralized control and are invisible to big tech. We have various new Google phones in our store. These devices use an open source AOSP and have no Google on them and no Google ID, so they are invisible to Google. Check out our store for various models. We have a VPN service, Bytes VPN, which is a stealth VPN, in that it doesn't scream that you're in a VPN. We do not put thousands of you on a single server. 
We have Braxmail, which eliminates the metadata from your emails. This means no IP addresses and traces on your email that show where it came from. We can give you five domains so you can partition your activities. All of these products are on the store on my app, Braxme. Sign up on there. You will not be asked to give any personal information to sign up. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.